Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this day that God has given us and this time and place to come together. And as we come together this morning, are there any blessings to share from this past week? Oh, Bernie. <clears throat> um, yesterday was a surprise baby shower for our grandchild in Germany, and Laura flew over for us to, to be part of the surprise. So oh, she, how nice. they had a wonderful, fantastic time, and she's in the air coming back. She won't make the service this morning. <laughs> But we had a, it was beautiful. That's great. great. What a blessing. Yeah. Other blessings to share. Oh, Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, my son was notified this week that he was graduating at the top of his class. So your son who's graduating at the top of his class. Yes. Wow. Great. Okay. Yes. Um, we had a wonderful time at Theology on Tap this past week at a new location, Foxborough Mandarin. And we're going there again next month on May 15th. So for those of you who may have been put off by the no noisy locations we have been in in the past and had difficulty hearing, I can assure you this is one of the quietest spaces we have been in. <laughs> and so you will be able to hear the conversation easily. So I invite you to join us. And there's good food. And there's good food, but best of all, there's good company. <laughs> Your friend Bridget who passed the bar. We had a wonderful community dinner last night. We served over 50 people. Ooh, for community dinner and serving over 50 people last night. Great. With those blessings shared then, and as others have come to mind, may we lift them up to God with much gratitude. And may we now turn our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the worship of God. Once there was a man who did such amazing things and who said such wonderful things that people asked him who he was. And he answered them, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for you and to him and to him and to him I am the good shepherd as the Father knows me, I know you. I know you, I know you, I know you. And no one can take you away. And no one can take you away. You are the good shepherd. You lay down your life for me. And to win, and to win, and to win. You are the good shepherd. As the Father knows you, you know me. And no one can take you away. And no one can take you away.
Please join me in the call to worship. When we are scattered, Jesus, our good shepherd, gathers us in. When we are lost and lonely, we can depend on Christ's love. When we are oppressed, Jesus, our good shepherd, cares for us. When we are threatened because of who we are, we can depend on Christ's protection. We know Christ because Christ's tenderness has guided us for generations. Christ knows us by name. Christ will lay down his very life for our sake. Let us worship our good shepherd who cares for all of us with fierce love. Let us give thanks for Christ's presence with us. join me in the prayer of confession. Shepherding Christ, even as you lay down your life for us, we confess our unwillingness to support those in need. Too often, we, more be, we may be more like the one who runs away in times of trouble. We aren't always bold enough to protect the powerless. Following your example is easy or comfortable. Forgive us, help us lay down our apathy, and follow your example. Remind us that we belong to one another and to you. Amen.
Receive now the good news. Beloved of God, receive this comfort. It is impossible to respond to every need in this complicated world. A full life of faith gives us the grace to lay down our work, to take the rest we need, then refocus our energy toward the cause of the oppressed. Rest in the shelter of your good shepherd, knowing you can take up the cause again with restored souls. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. I see lots of friends. Do you want to come join me up here on the steps? Hi there, come on. Good. And I think we have a couple of new friends coming too. Come on up. We have a spot just for you. So, as you were listening to beginning of the service, what were we talking about? Who were we talking about? There was a clue. We were talking about a good shepherd. What does a good shepherd need? A lamb, a sheep. It's hard to be a shepherd without any sheep to take care of, right? Can you think of any other Bible stories that you might know that have shepherds in them? What about the Christmas story? Do you remember any shepherds in that story? The angel comes to the shepherds out in the fields and says that Jesus has been born and the shepherds all go to the manger to see the baby Jesus, right? There are actually lots of shepherds in the Bible in all kinds of places. What do you know about sheep? Do you know anything about sheep? Have you ever met a sheep maybe at a petting zoo? Yeah, what did you observe of them? What did you notice about sheep at the petting zoo? They have to have lots of fur to stay warm in the winter. That is very true. Do they like to eat? Yeah, they eat all the time, don't they? Do you know anything else about sheep? Sheep are not the smartest animals on the planet. They need lots of tending. Sheep tend to wander off and get lost. Sheep can get into serious trouble. If a sheep falls over, it can't get up. It has to have help from the shepherd to get them back right side up and the way they're supposed to be. So I wonder if we're talking today about Jesus as the good shepherd. Who are Jesus' sheep? Take a guess. We are the sheep, right? Sometimes we're not the smartest on the planet either, and sometimes we get ourselves into trouble, and sometimes we even tip over, and we need help to get back up. And that's why Jesus is the Good Shepherd, because the Good Shepherd is always there to help us come back to the places where we're safe, to be right side up and to follow where the shepherd leads us, right? All right, let's go downstairs. And I, have, I think we have some other friends joining us who are a little older who are gonna help us. And we're gonna go talk some more about the good shepherd, okay? Come on, let's go. And as we continue our worship on this day on Good Shepherd Sunday, as we have received the peace of Christ, may we share it with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share words and signs of peace with those around us.
shepherd me, O God, behold my wants, behold my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall The word of scripture that greets us this morning comes from the gospel according to John. I read from chapter 10, beginning in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. And may we respond together. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? giver of life. We are so blessed to have this new day and this opportunity to gather, to find comfort and rest, to be re-energized and guided and assured for whatever lies ahead of us in this day or in this week. We give you thanks for the gift of your word that we now break open and for your spirit that comes and speaks through it. Now, O oh God, I pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight. For you alone are our rock and you alone our redeemer. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. <clears throat> so we know that from the Bible, we get lots of shepherd and sheep talk. We hear in the Old Testament of people like Moses, who was a shepherd, 
We know that David was a shepherd boy who became king of Israel. We are aware of shepherds that hang out with their flocks and receive good news from the angels about the birth of a Messiah. We know of the psalmist who writes of God as a shepherd. So it shouldn't surprise us that Jesus also, according to John's gospel, proclaims himself to be shepherd, a good shepherd. And perhaps what's challenging in that, as familiar as it is, as iconic as it is, that we are, at least in this corner of the world, and our lives are quite distant from sheep and shepherds, real ones. We're that one step removed from an agrarian culture. We don't have some of the context of what it was like back in ancient Palestine or what it might even be like in other places in the world where sheep safely graze. So to hear someone using that term shepherd, particularly in the context of Jesus' time, it's important to remember. They were often jobs for those who were relegated to the margins. They were people who were out in the fields watching and tending and caring for sure. They were young and old, they were men and women. They weren't the wealthy and the rich. Those were the ones that owned the sheep and paid others to take care of them. They were often seen as a little suspect, a little rough around the edges. But we also know that for a shepherd, their goal, their commitment, their responsibility was to make sure that the sheep flourished because the sheep were worth money. It was an investment, it was food, it was wool, it was all those things we get. It was something to be cared for because in the flourishing of the sheep, they got a paycheck. And the owner got some wealth from it. They all could make a living. I saw this past week that the results of the global flourishing study, the first results have been released. This study, which in part has been undergone by um, the Gallup poll and is expected to follow people for many years, is based upon this idea of what human flourishing means. And that for humans to flourish, it includes things like security, it includes things like character and ethics, it includes things like their connection to community. It includes things like mental and physical health. And what they have found so far in this study, which is global, is that religiosity has a positive impact on human flourishing. But then maybe that's preaching to the choir. People's participation in a faith, people's participation in communal life and faith practices adds to their flourishing their fullness. Now Jesus, Jesus refers to himself not just as shepherd, but good shepherd. And theologians would say, part of the reason for doing this is to make some distinctions. Good here isn't just the antithesis of bad. Good may be better understood as model shepherd, the ideal shepherd. And rather than looking upon sheep like shepherd do as 
having just financial worth and value, some sort of transactional relationship, or rather than being like those hired hands who might just run away and ignore the sheep out of fear and danger, Jesus models this connection, this closeness, this intimate relationship with the sheep. He is the good shepherd. And Jesus comes and shares with his disciples, as he does with us, that this idea is that we should all flourish, that we should all know the fullness that God has put within us and wishes for us, that we should flourish as God's creation because God wills it. All are God's children. All, therefore, should flourish. The systems, the behaviors, the laws and the politics that divide and diminish and separate are not part of God's vision of the kingdom of God. And so Jesus talks about being a shepherd that's in such close relationship that he knows the sheep and the sheep know him. That he knows what they're up to. He knows that they can get into trouble. He knows that they will wander. He knows that they will need care. Binding up of wounds. He knows them. And they also know him by that voice. The preacher Barbara Brown Taylor once talked about this image of shepherding as she had a friend who actually worked on a sheep ranch in Montana and said, well, sure, there's that idea out there that sheep are pretty dumb. <laughs> but, you know, that's probably more the cattle ranchers that started that rumor. <laughs> the cattle ranchers, you see, knew something, that sheep behave differently than cows. If you yell and prod from behind a herd of cows, they will move. If you yell and prod behind a herd of sheep, they won't go anywhere. In fact, they may go behind the shepherd. They, as sheep, prefer to be led. And I would say that whether you're talking about a domesticated animal, whether it be sheep or a cow or anything else, there's all within that a certain level of care and guidance and concern that the human person has over them. And maybe it is for the church, for people of God like us, it's quite a menagerie. Maybe some of us are more like sheep. Maybe some of us are more like cows. Maybe some of us are more like cats. That there's different places that we come to and where our motivators are and how we respond to living the call to discipleship, to moving and opening ourselves up into God's vision and God's direction. Jesus embodies this image of shepherd, one who will lay down his life for the sheep, something that a lot of shepherds would not do. He creates this connection, this community, shepherd and sheep knowing each other. It's in that deep abiding relationship and that presence of the shepherd where we're called to pay real attention and maybe less to the sheep part. Consider a God who would come to us and be with us in this way, a God who would open God's self in this way and even sacrifice in this way for our flourishing. Earlier before the scriptures, we sang the refrain, shepherd me, O God, from all my wants, and from all my fears, from death 
into life. What you and I know all too well is that there's lots of voices out there. There's lots of voices that come to us and call us and try to lead us in certain directions. And for the voices that come and prey upon wants and try to twist those to get those to follow, or prey upon our fears, lead us in paths that are not towards our flourishing or to the world's flourishing. That's not to say we don't have wants and we don't have fears and anxieties, but it is to say God offers an assurance and an alternative voice, a voice that says, if you want to flourish, stay connected with me. Listen to my voice. If you want to flourish, stay connected with a community. If you want to flourish, open your hearts and your arms wide. Because your flourishing is not the end of the story. Your flourishing or my flourishing is incomplete unless all of our neighbors, all children of God, have a similar kind of flourishing. For all the voices that call upon us and draw us down different paths, we come here to celebrate the voice that called us into life and called us into new life, the one that called us into community. And so our connection and our compassion, that is where things lie in the balance. For the church, like ours, it is to be a place that is truly welcome and open to all so that those who come through our doors and into our midst might hear God's voice, the shepherd's voice. For our world, that compassion and connectiveness is before us and important to consider as tomorrow we mark Earth Day. In the midst of being called to be stewards of creation, we know the state of creation. We know the troubles we're facing. And in particular, if you haven't read up on it this year, a particular focus on the scourge of single-use plastics that don't ever disappear. To care for creation is to listen to the voice of the shepherd to remember that everything is in community, including us, the plants, the animals, the birds, and the fish. In the midst of the divisiveness that happens, in the midst of conflicts, Israel and Gaza, Ukraine and Russia, migrant and citizen, Democrat and Republican, there is a call from the shepherd to continue to work towards connectedness, to move beyond absolutes and polar opposites so that we, we might come forth and move beyond our wants and our fears from death into life, flourishing. The good news is that the God who came to us in Jesus Christ is the one who is our great shepherd, model shepherd, and one who continues to speak to us and call us by name and invites us into that trusting and comforting circle, that sheep pen, that pasture where we can flourish where we know others will flourish too, where we can trust and not be afraid, where we can safely graze, where we can live, where we can enjoy the company of one another and see and be more clearly the kingdom of God.
As we come to a time of prayer this morning, are there joys or concerns that we wish to hold up in community on this day? Then I would invite us to lift up the prayers that are upon our hearts this day, the joys and concerns, and lift them up to God in silent conversation. Creator God, as the earth around us <clears throat> awakens and brightens <clears throat> from a winter slumber and grayness, our spirits are lifted by the vibrant colors of spring. and the promises of a new season of growth. But we are also mindful that we have not been the best stewards of your creation. And we pray that you would encourage us that along with our appreciation for the grandeur and beauty of the world in which we live in that you made we would find ways to be better stewards caretakers in our personal actions in our communal life so that your creation might flourish because in that is the key to our flourishing. Oh God, we give you thanks that you show us the way to connectedness, community, and compassion. Help us to listen for your voice amidst all the noise that is out there. Help us to trust your voice above all others that would lead us down other paths. It is no doubt, and we confess, work to follow you, to trust you, to build community. But we are grateful for your presence here in that work and our witness. As your spirit surrounds us and guides us and calls us, may we follow with excitement, with hope in the future, may we trust in your leading. 
and free ourselves from doubts and comforts and the constraints and blinders and boxes and walls that we put up. From the prayers that are upon our hearts and minds this day, the joys and concerns which touch our lives and those for whom we pray, we are grateful that you hear our prayers and you respond to them and you respond to those for whom we pray with signs of your abiding presence, your strength and comfort your peace. May we know all of that as well. In the prayers we offer for ourselves. So we humbly lift up this prayer to you, Good Shepherd, even as we are bold to pray as we were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. As we come to a time of offering, receive these words. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to serve others with joy and to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what has been given and what is ours to give. The morning offering will now be received. When he rolls up his sleeves, the angels putting on the ribs. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close, so you better be believing. Our God is an awesome God. Our God. sky was starless in the void of the night. Our God is an awesome God. He spoke into the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. The judgment and wrath he poured out on Sodom. The mercy and grace he gave is not the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten. Our God is an awesome God. Our God 
Thank you, God, for the opportunity to share in your creative and restorative work among people. Because you blessed us, we have much to give. These offerings express our gratitude and our aspiration to be more fully your own loyal community. Amen. Tell all the nations, tell all the nations of his alone. Go ye out and tell all the nations, tell all the nations of his alone. Praise ye the Lord, praise him all ye nations, glorify him all you people. Praise ye the Lord, you gotta praise him all your nations, glorify him all your peoples. Go ye out and tell all the nations, tell all the nations of his love. Go ye out and tell all the nations, tell all the nations of his love. Steadfast is his love, his kindness lasts forever, his love is pure, lasting all our days. Steadfast is his love, his kindness lasts forever, his love is pure, lasting all our days. Go ye out and tell all the nations, tell all the nations of his love. Out and tell all the nations, tell all the nations of his love. Go ye out and tell all the nations, tell all the nations of his love. Go ye out and tell all the nations, tell all the nations of his love. invited to be seated for a few announcements before we depart on our day. And first, I'm going to invite Mary Peterson to come forward to offer us a Here at Bethany moment. Good morning. I'm here today to speak to you about Bethany's Baskets of Hope ministry which is part of Mission Outreach and benefits the New Hope Domestic Violence Shelters in Attleboro. Our small group includes Cindy Bell, Diane Emis, Michelle Bodie, and myself. New Hope serves individuals and families displaced by domestic and sexual violence in the greater Attleboro area. 
This ministry has been going on here at Bethany for about 25 years. It started with baskets um, just for the holidays and has moved to monthly seasonally themed um, baskets. All of the donated items are designed to be bright and cheery and uplifting. We send coffee and sugar and lots of baking mixes. Uh, we also include items for every age of the children at each of the shelters. Uh, we recently received a, a very generous donation and were able to purchase some new decorative children's sheet sets. Think rainbows and construction guys. And um, they'll be delivered next month and we know they'll be excited and grateful when they get them. Um, the donations are delivered to the shelters by New Hope workers. The shelters are anonymous. Each of the shelters um, houses six adults with various number of children. The, uh, there has been groundbreak the groundbreaking has occurred for a new shelter. It will combine the two shelters and will be able to serve 14 um, as opposed to 12 adults and all of their accompanying children. So how can you participate? We are launching a coloring book and crayon slash um, colored pencil drive. The coloring books can be for the little ones or for adults. They must be non-religious based and non-violent. Um, we'll place a basket for these in the narthex and we'll run the, the drive for about a month. There's also a basket downstairs on the table that has all the baskets and that basket is always there and we always welcome any donations. And we are just very grateful for the support here at Bethany. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Mary. A reminder that this coming Saturday, the 27th, is Mission Possible Day. Uh, quite a few of you have signed up. There's still room for more. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet down on the bulletin board, or you can go to the sign-up genius. Uh, our day will be roughly from 9 to 1. Uh, just one little uh, modification to the timeline. For those who might be interested in serving and helping out at the Mansfield Food Pantry, that time frame is 8.30 to 11. Is that right, Dorothy? 8.30 to 11. Um, and that's a, a limited group that can uh, be there um, because of space reasons. So just be aware of that. Um, and for all who signed up uh, or will be signing up today, we will be reaching out to you this week with emails uh, to give you more detailed information uh, depending on what you <coughs> signed up to help with. We continue to receive volunteers uh, for landscape helpers uh, during the spring and summer and fall season. If you notice with everything greening up, the lawn's starting to grow and um, so uh, we're gonna need some help. And along with the lawn, I think the weeds are starting to grow too. So um, I like uh, um, Bill Side's uh, great wisdom was that if you're walking into church or out of church and you see a weed in a garden bed, pull it. <laughs> that's, your, that's your contribution, simple as that. Uh, but we can also use some help on a regular basis with uh, the lawn mowing and trimming and all of that. Um, this uh, coming week, we'll be uh, meeting for the disbursement of fair funds. Today at midnight, to be really official, uh, is the deadline for uh, requests to be made. Uh, and Diane Thies is right over there, if you don't know who Diane is. She also has paper copies of the form with her, if you'd like one and have an idea. Otherwise, you can um, access that uh, online through our constant contact and fill one out and email it to her. So, and thanks again to those who have uh, uh, already made submissions and um, thought of some possible good things to use uh, the uh, fair funds with, and thanks to the committee for their generosity with that. Um, so with those announcements made, I would invite us to rise in body or spirit as we are able. So on this bright and beautiful day. We are thankful for the increased amount of time of light we have that marks this season and the beginning of it. And so we are also grateful for the light, the Christ, the Good Shepherd, who 
goes ahead of us and leads us, calls us to follow by light and by voice in our behavior and character through all of our senses, caring, connecting, loving. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us now and forevermore. And let God's people say, Amen. Thank you.